for China's Shenzhou 12 space mission. I'm Zhao Yang in Beijing. The Chinese capital is expecting the homecoming of three Taikonauts who returned to Earth earlier today. Ye Haisheng, Liu Boming, and Tang Hongbo are back after spending three months on China's first space station. They were safely picked up from the Shenzhou 12 re entry capsule after a touchdown in Dongfeng in northern China's Inner Mongolia region. And all three are said to be in physically good shape. They arrived on Earth at 13.34 hours Beijing time. The Shenzhou 12 crew helped build China's first space station, the Tiangong. They also set a new record for China's space program for their length of time in space. Before the return journey, the Taikonauts completed various tasks with the support of colleagues on the ground. They sorted and downloaded experiment data and prepared and transferred supplies kept in orbit. China's space engineers are celebrating the successful return of the Shenzhou 12 crew today, but they say their work is far from over. Sun Ye reports from the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. Here at the Beijing Control Center, the joy, the elation, the effusiveness when that big moment of success was announced was really palpable, and space engineers have been telling us this day has been perfect. I would describe today as perfect. The entire Shenzhou 12 mission met the goals planned out for it, and this lays a concrete foundation for the future developments of China's space station. After being under strict quarantine for a week, they'll continue to recuperate for a few months. We will ensure the Taikonauts are doing well when they're home. They'll have physical checkups, medical security, and nutrition plans. The goal is for them to recover their physical fitness as soon as possible, or be in even better shape than before they left, because they could have new assignments. And they sure deserve some time for celebration. Sun Ye, CGTN, Beijing. Let's take a look at the profiles of the three Taikonauts. Ni Haisheng is one of the country's most experienced Taikonauts, have been selected for the first batch of China's astronauts in 1998. The former fighter pilot from a farming family in Hubei province has now set a national record for the most number of days in space, more than 100 days. In 2005, Nia was a f- uh, remarkable uh, representing that we have become an advanced country. But before that, you know that we've already performed 11 missions from Shenzhou 1 to Shenzhou 11, mm-hmm. uh, the spaceships. We have already mastered the core transportation, the rendezvous and the docking, and also the EVA technologies, the three fundamental technologies of manned space engineering. But that do not mean that we've already mastered all the technologies needed for a construction and also operation of a space station. So uh, in this year and the next year will be a very critical stage for the space station program. And the Shenzhou 12, Shenzhou 13, uh, with these missions, with the two crew, will master all these technologies. So this you, you can see that this time, uh, usually in, during the years before, during any missions, there are one watering and the other two newcomers, uh, such as the Shenzhou 9 and the Shenzhou 10 mission. But mm-hmm. this time, you see, we have two astronauts who have already had their flight mission before. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Ni Aisheng even have two. So you can see how important this mission is. Because you know that Mr. Ni Aisheng performed the second manual docking mm-hmm. during the Shenzhou 10 mission. So if anything wrong happened to this Shenzhou 12 mission, uh, for instance, the malfunction of the docking procedure, Mr. Ni Aisheng can take the role of the manual docking to save the mission. Mm. Uh, this is the first one. And also, Mr. Liu, Liu Boming, you see that during the first EBA of China, during the uh, Shenzhou 7 mission in 2008, uh, Mr. Liu Boming wears the Russian space suit, the Orland space suit, to help Mr. Zhang Zhigang, who wears the, uh, who wore the uh, Fei Tian space suit, uh, to perform the first EBA of China. Mm. So he is very experienced in this, uh, this field. So this time, you see that uh, Mr. Liu Boming performed two EBA during this Shenzhou 12 mission. The EVA or the actual vehicular activity is very, very important, not only for the construction, for the maintenance, and even repair of the China space station, but also very critical for the future scientific research. Some of the research can be performed inside the station. Uh, we have standard racks for, for instance, the microgravity, the human science, the space medicine, etc. So, but for many uh, te- uh, research works, uh, it should be done outside the station. So we need this kind of EVA. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. In the future, we can see more and more frequently uh, perform the EVA during every uh, turn of the uh, space station missions. So this time, uh, we use the uh, second generation Fitian space suits, which were brought to the station by the Tianzhou 2 cargo ship. And they performed two very successful. We we, we are witness of this uh, these these activities uh, several days before. So uh, this means that we already have great progress on technologies, especially the uh, the design and manufacturing of the spacesuits, and also on the uh, EVA itself, uh, which is very uh, necessary for the future activities. And moreover, you see that we have a very big uh, robotic arm with a mass of, mm. of about 700 uh, uh, kilometers, uh, kilograms, sorry. Uh, you, you may still remember that uh, Ms. the first uh, EVA, Mr. Liu Boming, is standing mm, on one end right. uh, with the aid, with the assistance of the uh, robotic arm. He can uh, move very fast from one place to a distant yeah. one. So this is very, also very helpful. Uh, to save the energy of the astronauts. And he can, he can also bring very complex instruments uh, together with the robotic arm. Mm. And the, they also perform, actually speaking, the operations of the robotic arm inside the station. There are three uh, display screens inside the station, and just below that is a, uh, is a panel, is, is a control panel of the robotic arm. So the other, uh, the third astronaut can operate the robotic arm in any cases. Uh, very, very complex. So you can see all these are very, very complex, and all these are very, very necessary. So uh, this is the importance of this uh, Shenzhou 12 mission to China's manned space program. As we have already discussed, it's also very important for China to become an advanced country in this field. Right, and I definitely want to talk to you more about these, uh, some of the technical aspects of this mission uh, a little bit later on, but just to get a, a bit more of an overview of this, uh, this mission in the, the, you know, in the big picture of China's uh, space program. You know, how far away is China from having its own space station, a fully functioning space station? I mean, it's still in construction at the moment, right? So give us a sense of the timeline here, what kind of missions are coming up? You may notice that uh, we will have the Shenzhou 13 mission next month. So uh, you may also notice that uh, the Shenzhou 13 crew will go to the station uh, after the Shenzhou 12 crew goes back. Right. One important reason is that we only have three bedrooms inside <laughs> the station. So in the future, you Practical know that concerns. as you already asked, the China space station will have six bedrooms. Uh, the other three are in the Wentian uh, ex experimental module. So after the uh, Wentian is launched by the Long March 5B rocket, maybe next year, and docked to the station, uh, it, it is a moment uh, fit for six astronauts to stay simultaneously inside the station. So in the future, uh, after construction of the station, uh, the astronauts, uh, each activation team will hand over their duty in the orbit. Right. Uh, so uh, from that moment, there will be a continuous uninterrupted residents of Chinese astronauts. Like inside. how the ISS functions. Yes, exactly. Right? Like yeah. the ISS, since about 2000 years, mm. uh, the first who go inside the ISS, there is no mm. interruption. So uh, the human being has uh, inside, uh, has go to outer space for continuous more than 20 years. So uh, at that moment, maybe next year, uh, after the launching and the docking of the Wentian and the Mengtian module, mm -hmm. the T-shaped China space station, the basic configuration will be accomplished. Oh. So at that moment, we can see that uh, we have already accomplished mission. But before that, we have a lot of work to do. Right. For instance, the Tianzhou 3 cargo ship, the Tianzhou 13 mission, and next year, the Tianzhou 4 and the Shenzhou 14 mission. Well, okay, Professor Yingguan, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the uh, background stories of this mission. Well, uh, Yang Liwei became China's first person in space in 2003, and since then, uh, all Chinese astronauts have safely returned home. So uh, let's take a look at some of the previous landings back on Earth.
Well, the cruise return journey was full of technical challenges. And researchers prepared a series of contingency plans and technological upgrades for their spacecraft Shenzhou 12. It was Yasin reports. A big day for the Shenzhou 12 Taikonauts, and it's also an intense time for the ground crew. Just like the launch three months ago, the mission's return is filled with challenging tasks and maneuvers that require focus and quick decision-making from ground control. For example, if something goes wrong after the orbital module is dropped, we still have time to terminate the mission. But if the problem occurs after the braking engine ignition, the altitude of the orbit has dropped. We have to give the command within 30 seconds so that the return of the spacecraft can be delayed. But after 30 seconds, the trajectory has formed and the process is irreversible. We have to think about other options. With China's space station under construction, the Shenzhou spacecraft's orbit is more complex than before. There are more risks of emergencies. This requires more detailed designs and technology upgrades. This time, we added predictive guidance. The starting position of the spacecraft can be determined according to the target and time setting. The spacecraft can independently calculate the optimal return trajectory. Zhang says the return mission of Shenzhou 12 incorporates data from China's Beidou navigation satellite system for the first time. It provides real-time information about the spacecraft's position and reduces the possibility of landing errors. Liu Jiaxing, CGTN, Beijing. Well, let's get back to our, our guest, Professor Yang. Uh, Professor Yang, you know, you were talking about uh, all these important technical upgrades and technical tests that had to be conducted uh, with this mission, and you did mention the new spacesuit, uh, Fei Tian. So, just talk to us a bit more about that. What makes it really special? Well, you know that uh, the original design of the first generation Fei Tian spacesuit can last in space about four to five hours. Uh, it is a designed margin, but not uh, very uh, practiced. Uh, as I mentioned, only uh, 20 minutes working in outer space. But this time, you know that the designed uh, uh, working time in outer space is more than eight hours. Uh, actually speaking, during the first EVA, uh, they stood in outer space, uh, in open outer space, for more than seven hours, as we uh, as uh, we have already witnessed of this uh, EVA. And of course, for the second one, uh, also, you know, that the scheduled uh, the EVA is eight hours, but you could, because they have already been practical and mm -hmm. the operation is very fast, uh, only six and a half hours, uh, they have accomplished all their tasks and go back. Right. So we can see that the uh, these uh, EVA suits, for, it is the first time for China to reuse the EVA space suit. The, because of the limitation of the uh, capability to uh, brought anything back to the Earth, during during the Shenzhou uh, 7 mission, after the EVA, the two space suits were abandoned. So it is a great pity we haven't brought that back to the Earth. Yeah, well, in, the, in the, only the globes, were because it is small enough. <laughs> so the Judge Gang brought the, uh, the two globes uh, back to the Earth. Uh, but this time, you know that uh, we have performed two EVA, and the designed life is 15 times within three years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe that the performance of this Fitian second generation Fitian space suit has already been been proved. And you may notice also that the shape of the space suit is quite different from the first generation, and they are e even have. Uh, Illumination lights uh, on the shoulder of the space uh -huh. suit, and they, they can have, you know, that in, in the helmet they can have water to drink and also mm -hmm. have something to eat uh, because it lasts too long for eight hours EVA, and also uh, it is a very tough for, uh, tough task for them. And we can still remember during the EVA when Liu Bengming uh, first go outside the uh, outside the, 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 the hatch, he said. Sorry, Professor, I just want okay. to uh, stop you for a moment just to uh, point out for our audience that uh, we're seeing some images right now at uh, the airport in Beijing, the Xijiao Airport, where uh, the three astronauts are arriving and they have just landed. So we'll uh, get back to that a little bit more later. But Professor, I'm sorry, back to you, what you were saying about the EVA suit. So, you, I mean, eight hours, that's, uh, that's uh, basically a full work day, isn't it? And so, they can you drink, they can... Uh, when, uh when Mr. Huh? Liu Bengming goes out of the hatch, he said, wow, it's so beautiful outside. <laughs> so this means that he's in a very good condition mm. because, you know, that the thermal control of the EVA must be carefully designed. And if it is too hot and too cold, 
it, the astronaut will feel very uncomfortable. Mm. So this means that the design is correct, is very uh, perfect. And also, it protects the astronaut from the threatens, uh, such as the debris in outer space, and also the dangerous deep, uh, radiation, and also the vacuum condition. So this uh, kind of design must be uh, designed very carefully and also be tested on the ground. Mm. So after so many years, since 2008, the, we have great improvements and achievements in the design manufacturing of this EVA suit technology. And not only the suit, but also, but also the, uh, you know, that's the node of the core module act as a hat, uh, uh, sorry, act, act as the airlock of the, this kind of EVA. So in the future, it will be act as a secondary or a backup uh, hatch, mm. uh, airlock for the, for the future EVAs. And the main airlock will be brought to the station by the Wenpian module. I mean, that's incredible when you think about the kind of conditions that it has to be able to withstand in space. I mean, it's really conditions that most of us can't really imagine, right? But you also did mention about a uh, robotic arm before, and that you know has reduced the time, uh, I guess, in a way for the astronauts to move from their spaceship, from the hatch, uh, to where they need to go, right? And that's that's very important too. Yes. Uh, uh, we're looking at the uh, images right now from Cixiao Airport. And there's the staff preparing the plane uh, for disembarking for the astronauts to disembark shortly. Uh, so the astronauts, after they returned to the Earth, uh, they were brought to the helicopter by the rescue team and then uh, fly to an airport very close to the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center mm. and then take this plane back to Beijing. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask you about that. So there were you know, a lot of the iconic images we saw of um, uh, the crew having landed and they were sitting on these reclining chairs uh, outside of their space capsules. Uh, that, that's, there's a reason why they're sitting there, right? For, that's very, very very necessary. Uh, you know that they have already stayed in outer space for more than three months mm -hmm. and in the uh, microgravity environment because uh, there is a lacking of the stimulation of the gravity to our bones and also to our uh, uh, ma uh, muscles. So the, uh, there is a continuous uh, weakening of the muscles and also there are lots of the uh, calcium or mm -hmm. lots of the bones. So the, that is the reason why the astronauts should do a lot of uh, physical exercise exercise every day, uh, usually two hours every day, but just before they return, they will do more and more intensively. But even if we have all these kind of counter, uh, countermeasures uh, to adapt, uh, re-adapt the gravity, still it is very, very dangerous for the astronauts. So uh, only if we can have a normal uh, descent and mm -hmm. landing, we will use the, uh, the, the rescue team, will help the astronauts to go outside their cabin and also uh, during all this procedure, the as astronauts were well protected. Uh, so that's a normal procedure. But in the emergency, emergency case, uh, for instance, if the landing site is, the landing point is very, not very accurate, maybe in some forest and even in some other places, uh, they uh, the astronauts must help themselves. So they're sitting there also just to readjust themselves back to Earth's gravity. So, I mean, uh, now, it, it, just to recap for our audience, you know, they landed at 1.34 p.m. Beijing time, so that's... Uh, uh, seven hours ago, so uh, in the last seven hours, I, I guess they can we consider that they would have completely readjusted and uh, uh, no not very good no, not, not very long enough you know that no. during these hours they were they performed some uh, medical checking right. uh, medical examination uh, and also uh, you know that they will stay uh, and uh, taking rest for uh, several days uh, mm. usually several weeks and also there is uh, according to the report there will be a quarantine procedure not because of COVID-19 <laughs> just because you know that uh, their immune system mm -hmm. is rather weak right, uh, right. comparing with their uh, original condition uh, just before the launch mm. so uh, so any uh, any uh, microbes may be dangerous for the astronauts uh -huh. so there is a quarantine procedure to pr protect them yeah, so what sort of uh, what sort of condition would you expect they, them to be in over the next few days before they're considered uh, completely, uh, you know, completely safe, get the green light to go about their normal day, normal business? So first, uh, the nutrition is very important. Right. Uh, so I, I, I believe this will be a very important part for their recovery. And also to keep them healthy, uh, as the daily examination, the medical examination is also very necessary. And also they will do some uh, exercise uh, gradually uh, become more and more uh, like our daily life and finally they can readapt.
totally、mm. our gravity environment, and then go back home. So I mean, it was said,、uh, you know, shortly after they landed,、uh, reports were saying, you know, that all of them are in good shape. But would they be feeling physically weaker now, back on Earth, back in, on Earth's gravity, or is that just a kind of a precautionary thing?、Uh, it's it 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 depends. You know, for different people, there are usually different reactions.、Uh, some people are very strong, but、uh, maybe we cannot understand. But he cannot readapt the gravity very fast. Some people maybe not、uh, as strong as you imagine, but、mm. they can recover、mm. very fast. That's true. Then there is an equivalent example when you go to Tibet. It's、ah yes, yes. Some, the altitude,、uh, so、some strong people、yeah. they cannot adapt to the lacking of oxygen. And often the athletes, they say it's often athletes who go to high altitudes and actually may find it tougher, right? Exactly. Yeah. So、uh, this time it's different, and you know that it is the first time the Chinese astronauts stayed in space for、uh, long term.、Mm. So only、uh, for for the Shenzhou Eleven mission, they stayed in the Tiangong Two space laboratory only for one month. So that is the midterm residence. This time the long term residence. And for the next Shenzhou Thirteen mission, they will stay in outer space、uh, for six months. And now look, we see、uh, that would be the captain coming out first, I guess. Mr. Ni Haisheng. Yes, yes, that is that's、uh, Ni Haisheng、ah, exactly. coming off so now. So this is Mr. Ni Haisheng, the commander of the Shenzhou Twelve mission. Yeah, the three astronauts have arrived back on Earth at 1:34 p.m. and here comes the、uh, commander of the mission, disembarking from the plane, and he is being lifted off、uh, on a on a chair. Yes. Yes. And this is all. Mr. Ni Haisheng and Mr. Li Wenming were born in 1960s, but they are still in a very、uh, good shape.、Uh, this must be a, a really big moment for them. I mean, this is they will soon be able to reunite with their family and friends after three months up in space. Yeah, that you know, seems that's like an awfully long time to me.、Uh, Just this afternoon, Mr. During the interview with the reporters,、uh, Mr. Tom Hongbo just said to his parents, "I'm home." <laughs> Uh, wonderful moment for them. So of course they are, as you were saying, sitting in these chairs. I mean, they're taking time to recuperate and readjust their bodies and、uh, their physical conditions to us after、uh, really, I mean, three months. Additionally, well, you know, that's the longest record is four hundred and three, four hundred and thirty-seven days in outer space. Uh, the same person up there for 137. Not the same.、Uh, yes, the same person continuously stayed in outer space for 437 days,、wow. achieved by Polya、uh, Polyaev,、uh, a Russian cosmonaut, in Mir space station. And how was he、before. after he landed back on Earth? So the、uh, daily exercise、mm. is very very important. We just、uh, have this kind of、e、experience during this mission, with the treadmill, with the space bicycle, and、mm. also with other、uh, instruments. We can help the astronauts to keep their muscles strong. Yeah, very important. And also,、uh, not only to、uh, keep their safety, but also this is also one important part of the scientific research to study the influence of the microgravity、mm, to the human body. Human, body、right. you may notice,、uh, they take their own blood samples uh, uh, every several days, each person. So this, I believe that these samples will be have already brought back、yeah. by the re-entry capsule of the Shenzhou Twelve. And that could be incredibly important for medical advancement, couldn't it? I mean, exactly. It could make breakthroughs in the kind of conditions that we might be able to doctors might be able to operate on in the future. That could actually. You know that、uh, you stay in the outer space、uh, is very similar to a patient lying a very long time. On the bed, so there,、uh, the influence of the microgravity, the countermeasures developed by the astronauts, may be also very helpful for the、mm. these kind of patients、uh, in the future to start to, to develop corresponding technologies、right. to help them. And that chair that、uh, Captain Yi is sitting in, I mean, that's not just an ordinary chair, is it? That that、it's、chair is specially designed. I believe that's specially designed. And here we come. Here's the next astronaut to disembark. Ah,、uh, Mr. Liu Guoming. Liu Guoming. This time he performed the two EVAs. This、mm. time in outer space.、Uh, this was the second mission in space, right? Yes.、He's、the first one、veteran. is, as we mentioned, the Shenzhou Seven mission. Right. And again, also carried down,、uh, lifted down,、uh, in one of these soft chairs, specially developed. Mr. Liu Guoming said he won't eat noodles <laughs> <laughs> after he come back. Because he he is a native of the Heilongjiang province. Ah,、uh, I see. 
So they like their starchy foods. So this, this must be a really quite a moving moment for them all. I also heard that uh, all these three astronauts were working very hard in the training for the EVA in mm. the uh, neutral buoyancy pool uh, just before the launch. You know that uh, it's even harder inside the pool because not only we have the, uh, also the drag from the course by the water. So, after the training every day, they cannot even lift the chopsticks. Oh, so wow. you can see how hard it is. How much, uh, how heavy are these EVA suits? Uh, more than 120 or 30 kilogram, kilograms. But when they're wearing it, uh, obviously in the kind of space, uh, <laughs> you know, low gravity conditions, what does it, what would it feel like for these astronauts? I mean, it certainly wouldn't feel like uh, Well, kilograms. because you know there is no gravity mm. uh, in the orbit, so there is no difficulty for them Right. to vary these species, but it is difficult them? but it is difficult for them to move right right uh, and that's why this robotic arm has really come in uh, yeah. handy isn't it? because there are two factors because you know that we must keep the pressure to, to pre protect their life mm. uh, so the pressure will cause uh, the rigid connections so the, it is very hard for them to change the shape of their body uh, mm. because of the pressure inside the other thing comes from the mass as we mentioned 120 or 30 kilograms very very heavy so uh, they cannot feel uh, feel the difficulty but when they move uh, so it, they need a lot of strength right so the next one will be mr tang hongbo yes the last of the three-man crew yes and for him this was his first this is his first uh, he just uh, one year younger than i am <laughs> mr tang hong because he belongs oh to we won't the... ask how old you are professor young <laughs> <laughs> so he's uh, he belongs to the second batch as uh -huh. introduced by your colleagues uh but mr tang hongbo is very lucky i think uh he is uh you know that this is a historical moment um, mission. The first crew to the China space station. They are making history. Right. Yeah, and that is that is exciting to be part of that. Yes, and Mr. Tang Hongbo performed very perfectly uh, outside the station during mm. the EVA. You know that uh, he takes a very different role from Mr. Liu Boming. Mr. Liu Boming uh, during the first one he moves. Uh, uh, with the assistant of the robotic arm. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Tang Hongbo move all by himself. And uh, also there is a technology demonstration of the emergent escape from the EVA. So he goes back from the far end of the station to the uh, EVA hatch very quickly. Uh, so this is also a very important trail for the future, uh, for the future missions. If anything wrong happened, they can get back and save their own lives. Wow. Well, I think that's uh, they're preparing to uh, help Mr. Tang come off soon. So 90 days up in space. I mean, this so far, this is uh, you know setting a record for China, right? For for the longest manned mission, was in space. Uh, well, this is the first space station for China, but. Uh, 90 days, I mean, is that a long time? The International Space Station does uh, six-month six rotations? And, and then you uh, said there was that amazing 400 and something day record. Usually, uh, the ordinary routine for an expedition team uh, for the ISS is about four months. Right. Four months uh, in outer space. The longest record is one year for two mm. astronauts. Uh, sorry, one astronaut from US and the other cosmonaut from Russia. Uh, so all these two uh, astronauts stayed in outer space for about one year, right. uh, and not longer, as I mentioned, uh, the Polyayev in uh, in the Mir station, he stayed there continuously for 437 days. Wow. So, uh, but this is very useful. You see, during the future potential missions to the Mars, uh, the astronauts will stay in outer space more than one and a half year, even two years. So it is necessary for them, for us, to study the influence of the microgravity environment right. to the human body in a so long period. Mm. All right, now we're looking at uh, Tang Hongbo coming off now, coming, uh, lighting from the plane and also being lifted out uh, in one of these uh, specially developed chairs because uh, their endurance for standing will decrease uh, having lived in zero gravity conditions for so long. And now returning to Earth and having to adapt uh, all over again to gravity. 
them. So they have to avoid standing for a long time, right? Which could so stay in outer calm. space for so long period, they may feel lonely and have homesick. So they will have communications with their family members and even have video uh, telephone with their families. Well, we also uh, have uh, Professor Mark McCoffrey joining us uh, over Skype. He's a, a senior advisor for science and space exploration at the European Space Agency in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, Professor, it's good to have you with us. Uh, thanks for joining us. So I want to ask you first uh, a little bit about uh, comparing China's space station and the International Space Station. Well, it's, you know, it's great to see the Chinese space station um, being built up now, being constructed. The ISS, of course, has been in operation for more than 20 years, continuously occupied for more than 20 years. And at the moment, it's a much bigger station. It has many more modules. Um, some of it's being renewed. So, for example, just recently, our astronauts have helped um, change the big solar panels, more efficient solar panels to generate energy on board. A new module has arrived recently, a new science module, a new European robotic arm has recently been installed. So there's lots of work being done on the ISS still today, hard but, over the past but some parts of the ISS, of course, are, are relatively old. And in fact, there are some concerns in the, in the medium term that there may be cracks in some places in the hole. So these stations don't last forever in space. Uh, but we've learned a lot with the ISS and, of course, are now beginning to build a new space station, a small one, which will be going to the moon with NASA, the gateway. So there's a lot being learned and there's a lot to do. But it's great to see uh, China building up its space station at the same time. And China's also uh, invited foreign astronauts to come and visit its space station, uh, stay there, and conduct experiments. Uh, so lots of opportunities ahead. Well, I think so, yes. I mean, the ISS, of course, is a is a large partnership between NASA, Europe, Canada and Japan and the Soviet Union, now Russia. Um, and of course, reaching out to other countries is a really important thing. So there have been astronauts which have flown with Russia in the past and the Soviet Union. And I think China doing that as well is a really important gesture scientifically and in terms of uh, cooperation. Uh, we have talked about some European astronauts potentially going uh, to the Chinese space station. I'm not fully aware of where the, the talks are on that at the moment. But as we look towards going back to the moon and then going on to Mars, it seems to me at least that uh, the broader the coalition of partners that we can bring together in these programs uh, to make that exploration for, for everybody uh, can only be a good thing. All right, benefits all. So, uh, Professor, what kind of uh, space cooperation uh, do you think we can expect in the future? Well, when it comes to space exploration, uh, Europe is collaborating with China already. We're building uh, a mission called SMILE, which is going to be investigating the very important magnetic bubble uh, around the Earth. But we're also looking at experiments which will go on uh, new Chinese missions to the moon. And we've also collaborated on uh, in, in Europe on uh, the mission which uh, Tianwen-1, which went to Mars. Uh, and so we see that as a, a bilateral cooperation with Europe and China, but also in a broader context. There are other nations in Europe, at the, the, just the country level, who are collaborating with China. So I think there's lots of opportunities with robotic exploration. And we'll see how that plays out with the the human space flight. That's always a little bit more political. I think we shouldn't, uh, you know, ignore that aspect of it. Uh, there's a need for a sort of national pre uh, preeminence in human space flight. Um, but you know, I think we're moving in a different direction to the the space race of the uh, 1960s and 1970s. All right. Well, lots to look forward to. Thank you so much, Professor Mark McCochran, Senior Advisor for Science and Exploration at the European Space Agency. Appreciate it. So if you're just uh, tuning in now, this is our special coverage of China's Shenzhou-12 space mission. And uh, we're now looking at the three crew members of the Shenzhou-12 back in Beijing. They arrived on Earth, back on Earth at uh, 1.34 p.m. Beijing time. And they landed, uh, uh, well, I guess uh, right on location uh, at the landing site in northern China's Inner Mongolia region. And uh, that was about seven and something hours ago. Now they're back in the capital. So the three men, the three men crew, composed of uh, Captain Ye Haisheng, uh, Liu Boming, also a veteran, uh, veteran uh, astronaut, as well as uh, Tang Hongbo, for whom it was the first manned space mission. There they are, saluting the public.
And uh, I want to bring in uh, Professor Young, who's been uh, watching all the events with us. Uh, Professor Young, so they look to me like they're in very good spirits. And, uh, sorry, and just to, before we get to that, uh, now we see the family of the astronauts handing them the bouquets. Oh, and this is, you know, this is their reunion after three months apart. I mean, for all its glory, it is also, uh, in some ways, a risky mission to do, isn't it, Professor Young? Yes. So and in this uh, moment you, is incredible. You know that, uh, as these are just, uh, we, uh, we are witness of the, the history. This is really, uh, the, the three astronauts make, make, has made history. Right. This time. So for the every families, mission, I mean, for every families, for them, it must be an incredibly proud moment. Yes. Every crew mission to uh, the first crew to the sta space station is very, very important. For instance, the first uh, space station of the U.S. is uh, called the Skylab. And it is because of the first crew that saved the whole mission. Because the, after the launch, uh, the, uh, the Skylab 1 is in a very uh, really bad condition in outer space. And the, uh, the, the crew called the Skylab 2 uh, on the Apollo spaceship just saved the mission, saved the mm. Skylab. And this time, we have, with these three astronauts, we have mastered and demonstrated so many new technologies, uh, very critical for Earth. Mm -hmm. So here we see uh, Captain Yeer in the middle, to his, la well, to his right, that would be uh, Liu Guoming, no, that's Tang Hongbo, right? And then to his uh, left. Yes. Mr. Nier is the first one in China that stayed more than 100 days accumulatedly in mm. outer space. So that's also another record for China. So where would they be headed then after this? I suppose uh, to uh, uh, clinic well, for well, they will be uh, or... they will be transported to the uh, China Astronaut Center oh. or the China Astronaut uh, Scientific Research and uh, Training Center. Right. Uh, so there are medical teams there to, to uh, help to the examine track. their bodies and also uh, help them for their recovery. Right. And this recovery could take, uh, what do you think, maybe maybe week, maybe, days? maybe several weeks. Several so that weeks. depends. So I mean, you know, we, uh, Professor, Young, I, I have to mention, you know, in the last few days we've seen this other incredible uh, development, which is uh, a civilian space flight. So you know, you, here we're talking about how incredibly tough it is for these astronauts who are well trained. Right, and practice in these areas, you know, trained in uh, living in all these kind of conditions. And for them to come back, then they have to readjust like this, maybe taking weeks, as you said. So then you have uh, civilians who are now able to just go up in space well, uh, and then come back. I mean, what do, they, what do they have to do to prepare? They, the, 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 what you mentioned, the inspiration for right. this mission, they will stay only in outer space for three days. So not so long as our mission. Mm. Uh, so, uh, but even if, even so, the four astronauts were very strictly trained uh, for any, uh, for instance, for the uh, affording of the G forces right. and also for the vibration and for the also they, they must uh, they have the ability to capability to rescue themselves right. in very special conditions. Do they were trained and even trained for? taking the uh, fighter pilots and also uh. they experienced the zero G plane. All these kinds of tra uh, training, no exception. So, uh, you know, that the space is hard. The outer space is very hazardous. So uh, all these, although they are civilians, but they were trained. But right. I should emphasize that even today, even we have this inspiration for, it is uh, still a game for billionaires. Because, <laughs> you know, the, the commander pays the cost for all the four. Yeah, I mean, if we want to do that, we better start saving up now, right? <laughs> uh. So again, uh, for our audience, you know, we're looking at uh, the arrival of uh, three Chinese astronauts. Uh, Nia Haisheng, Liu Guoming, and Tang Hongbo back in Beijing. They're at Sijiao Airport and they spent three months up in space at China's space station, conducting all kinds of tests and trials to prepare for even longer missions in the future. And they successfully landed today. So the leaders of the China Aerospace welcomed our heroes home. Yes, indeed, and it's a grand welcome, and they deserved it. Well, thank you so much, Professor Young. Uh, and, and just to recap, you know, the three Taikonauts, they lived and worked in the space station for three months. And uh, before we go, we'll leave you with a look back on that mission, and uh, we'll leave it there for this special coverage. I'm Xiao Yang in Beijing, and I was joined by Professor Yang Yuguang. Thanks so much for watching.
今天是在鬼飞行的第三个真正的周末啊！现在应该是在北京呢，然后那边应该是天津，北京应该是在这个什么地方？哇，在外面太热了，下面有白云。动腰动两，两人可以互相挥手致意。神舟十二号已经完成在轨驻留三个月的任务，即将返回载人飞船